He's been dubbed the Honourable Member for the early 20th century. And yesterday, Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Tory MP for North East Somerset, made his views on abortion and same-sex marriage perfectly clear. Now, it's very tempting to treat Jacob Rees-Mogg with his received pronunciation as something out of a Richard Curtis film. But I've got news for you. This guy, however cartoonish he may seem, is a potential leader of the Tory party. He could be the Prime Minister. The day before that interview, he polled number one amongst Conservative Party members as the preferred candidate to replace Theresa May as both leader of the party and as Prime Minister. He got 22%. Now, that might not sound like much, but it was more than David Davis on 15%. And when you find out that Philip Hammond and Boris Johnson were on less than 10%, it becomes patently clear. This guy is a real potential candidate to be the British Prime Minister. And it's not just his views on LGBT rights and reproductive rights, which are downright sinister and disgusting. Emblematic of that was how Rhys Mogg was the speaker at the annual dinner of the Traditional Britain Group in May 2013. Now, who are the Traditional Britain Group? They want the forced repatriation of black people to their homelands. So people like Stormzy or Rio Ferdinand or Doreen Lawrence would have to leave this country because it's not their country. Those are the views of the traditional Britain group at which Rees Mogg spoke. He was warned by Searchlight, an anti-fascist publication, ahead of speaking at that dinner of precisely their politics, and yet he ignored it. He ignored it, and he spoke there regardless, only distancing himself from them once he had been found out. So what do the traditional Britain group believe in? I'm not going to defame them, I'm not going to lie, smear. Go to their website, find out what they're about. They have it all in written English. It includes, we are opposed to internationalism and globalisation. We're opposed to communism, to socialism, to liberalism and to anarchism. We're opposed to mass immigration and multiculturalism. We're opposed to the class war. We're opposed to political correctness and support the repeal of all cultural Marxist legislation. These are classic tropes of the neo-fascist far right. Classic. Cultural Marxism, globalisation, internationalism, opposition to all perceived ideologies of both the centre and the left. This is the hallmark of pretty much every fascist organisation that's ever existed. This could have been written by the uh, National Socialists, the Nazi Party in Germany in the 1930s. And yet, Rees Mogg, when warned about these politics and this organisation, didn't care less. Carried on. He went down there in his dicky bow tie and addressed them. And no doubt, crack jokes about how black people shouldn't be here. And then there's the economics. Rees Mogg is a huge supporter of zero-hours contracts, so liberally used by big business to squeeze workers for every last penny. Rees Mogg says they're good for students, they're useful for people to get into more permanent forms of employment, and that those complaining about them being exploitative, well, that's just the usual leftist suspects. But that's remarkable. Support for zero-hours contracts when it's coming from somebody whose father was the last editor of the Times before it was bought by Rupert Murdoch, whose family's second home when he was growing up was in Smith Square, a stone's throw from Westminster. This is a man who went to Eton. He was born into remarkable privilege, and yet he champions zero-hours contracts. He does not know the meaning of work or what it's like for most people in this country who live hand-to-mouth. They live on a month-to-month -month basis. You could call it out of touch. I call it grotesque. Then in January 2014, he called the £250,000 spent on MPs' portraits trivial. He said that the quarter of a million pounds was chicken feed. Chicken feed. This is a man who supports the hours contracts, who supports welfare reform, who says that people with third children, well, they shouldn't be allowed to have child benefit. JSA is more than enough. We need to cut disability benefits for those scroungers who have the marzi and the temerity to not be able to work. He then says that £250,000 spent on paintings was chicken feed. Jacob Rees Mogg, you're a fucking twat. Then there's his views on Brexit being an opportunity for Britain to free itself from any environmental standards or protections and to cut the red tape in bureaucracy. Here's what he said in December 2016. And we could if we wanted accept emission standards from India, America and Europe. There'd be no contradiction in that. Well, we just so what well, we could in principle simply we allow we yeah, have no yeah. emission standards at all we effectively. Could say, we, we could say if it's good enough in India, we'll accept it here. Yeah. That would be it, it, 
There's nothing that, to stop that. Though. That we, we could, I think, if we went down that route um, in, as a general thing, if we simply said that we would not impose any regulatory constraints on any goods coming to this country, I think the risks of negative spillovers which would reduce productivity as well as a lot of other things that we tend to care we, about we, would be very high. We could take it a very long way because American emission, emission standards are high, probably in some cases higher. So we could remove, I accept that we, we're not going to allow dangerous toys to come in from China, but we don't um, want to see I, I think those, you very those, those other risks. Yeah. But there's a very long way you can go. We could go, we could certainly go a fair way. I think that we would find that the complications and the difficulties that, that mounted up would be quickly. Uh, would, would now, those remarks encapsulate something very sinister and central to Tory ideology. The less red tape and bureaucracy, the better. The fewer protections, the more profits. Well, after the events of Grenfell earlier this summer, we know where that can lead. Death, misery, suffering. Red tape is not a bad thing, especially for the built environment, especially for customer uh, and consumer regulations, especially for environmental safeguards and standards in the context of climate change. It's fundamental. It's one of the major reasons why we have government at all. But Jacob Rees-Mogg doesn't care. He doesn't care about Grenfell, the kind of cladding it has. He doesn't care about the fumes, the carbon monoxide your children will inhale. As long as he and his friends keep their money, as long as their little bank accounts keep on growing, he'll be smiling and he'll be saying his stupid long words all the way to the bank. Bigoted and steeped in privilege, it's no surprise that Jacob Rees-Mogg wants to defend the status quo where a tiny elite, him and his friends, benefit so much while the rest of us don't. And while his views on abortion and LGBT rights are not normal, they are the outlier, they and he have to be taken seriously because Jacob Rees-Mogg is now the preferred candidate to replace Theresa May amongst Conservative Party members. Do you know any Conservative Party members? What do they make of his views on abortion? on same-sex marriage. They agree with them? If they don't, what do they intend to do about it? Jacob Rees-Mogg is all that is wrong about this country. We can talk about freedom of speech, we can talk about an open debate, but we also have to talk about values, beliefs, principles, what we want to see in the world. We can't just talk about means, we also have to talk about ends. That is what, fundamentally, politics is about. Jacob Rees-Mogg is not a cartoon character. He's not a joke. He's not even a charlatan. He is a danger. He is a testament to all that is sick in British politics. He is a very, very nasty piece of work. And he shouldn't be accepted in public life.